Thank you for joining us on the program. Now, uh, it is the second round, round of presidential elections in the Indian Ocean island of Madagascar today. The runoff is between two ex-presidents, Mark Ravalo Manana and Andri Rajualina, who clashed during the country's 2009 political crisis. The two contenders had come a close first and second, far ahead of their competitors uh, in the preliminary vote in November. In that first round, Rajalina won 39% compared with 35% for Ravano Manana. So how have the two men come to this point? Here is some analysis of the rivalry between Andrew Rajalina and Mark Ravalo Manana. The race to the presidency stiffens up as Mark Ravalo Manana and Andy Rajalina the last two standing in the second round of the presidential election in Madagascar will have to implore aggressiveness. And it is undoubtedly dividing the population as it sounds more of score settling between two men who have had the opportunity to hold the highest office at the head of the country. Accusations of corruption, theft, incompetent trials, murderous sentences and charges of toppling the government. I asked him, sir, what about the peasant lands, the Malagasy lands that you took over, that you stole? He did not answer, but he said, it is my specialty. I didn't fake. I did not steal the rosewood money. I do not want to criticize people. I do not want to know where other people's money come from. They have money, but I won in the second round, and that's enough for me. Elected head of state in 2002, Ravalo Manana was forced to resign seven years later by a series of demonstrations supported by Rajualina, who was then mayor of the capital Antananarivo and was later installed by the army at the head of a transitional presidency. This personalized duel has overshadowed the reality of a country full of problems, poverty, corruption, insecurity, and this exacerbated rivalry pose serious risk of a new political crisis. Analyst Markus Schneider from Frederick Ebert Foundation also believes that in the event of tight results, the loser could challenge the results and plunge the country back into crisis. Well, besides the two politicians and election taking place in the capital, the concerns of the rural Malagasy population are more pressing. In Antananarivo, the supporters of the two candidates are indeed sharpening their weapons, but far from there, 950 kilometers to the south, it is hunger that worries the population day after day. In the region, rains have been very scarce for the past four years, harvests are insufficient, and 12% of children suffer from severe malnutrition. In the village of Ifutaka, at the southern tip of Madagascar, it is time for food aid, and these women could not miss it for the world. For several seasons now, the entire southern part of the big island has been drying up dangerously. A few days before the second round of the presidential election, the people of Abu Siria had missed a severe recurrent drought, and a shortage of international aid could like above all for the new government to allow them to save lives. I hope that the next president will be more aware of our situation. And we need more food aid. Warming and successive Enino weather patterns have made water increasingly scarce to the point of preventing any harvest of rice, the staple food. For the local head of the World Food Program, 1.2 million people are food insecure. There has been no good rainfall for at least four years, and as the local economy is based on agricultural production and livestock, households continue to cope. They have developed coping strategies that until now it only takes a small shock for households to be in this situation because they have, there has been so much deterioration in the livelihoods of this population over the past years. In the Abosiri region, World Food Program, UNICEF and the most urgent parent NGOs distribute rations and food supplement to protect the smallest children for as long as possible. 
of the 36 candidates in the first round, only two former president Andre Rajolina, a finalist, and outgoing Harry Rajonari Mampianina, a defeated candidate, made a brief appearance in the region. Rajorina returned last week with a helicopter to assure the population that he could not forget them. So we're taking you to Antanarivo, where our correspondent Volana tells us more about what is transpiring this morning. Good morning to you. Uh, can you tell us the atmosphere in Antanarivo? I have just returned from a polling station in the capital, uh, Julius Ferry High School in the Faravohitra district, where one of the two candidates, former president uh, Makravilo Manana, will vote in about an hour. In Madagascar, it is 8 a.m. at the moment, so the offices have been open for two hours now. The polling stations are open at 6 a.m., uh, as in the first round. The atmosphere is very calm. Here, the offices opened on time, no problem at all. This is the case in other stations in the capital. So it seems that there is, in terms of organization in the capital anyway, an improvement. But this is not the case in other stations in the provinces. My colleague from RFI, who is in the Toliara at the moment, told me that some offices had not opened on time. In any case, all voters with whom we spoke to confirmed. For the second round, transparency and fairness of the election are the guarantees of a peaceful post-election climate. A crucial role for observation missions, you think? In terms of transparency, a lot has been said during this campaign about financing. The two candidates were accused of spending millions of euros to campaign, including the use of helicopters, the distribution of T-shirts, concerts with Malagasy song superstars, and all that. Mark Ravolo Manana refuted this accusation of huge expenses, stating that the campaign had cost him only 90,000 uh, pounds out of of his own pocket, adding that the cost of his helicopter and the artists who supported it had been paid by generous donors. And Rojalina never disclosed the amount of his campaign funds to him. It should be recalled that the law gives them three months after the publication of the final results to publish the origin of their financing as far as observation and missions are concerned. They do play a key role. The European Union observation mission, uh, for instance, had announced a report published two days after the first round vote, the distribution of money at meetings of several candidates, cash distribution, sometimes hitting uh, in the form of a travel reimbursement for supporters attending campaigns. Well, the level of participation will be closely monitored uh, this time around, uh, since the first one was around 45 percent of registered voters attending or going to the polls. Did the two final, final candidates push enough? Indeed, 45 percent of Malagasy people did not move uh, to vote in the first round, and, they, and to convince electorates, each of them had their own style. First of all, in terms of form, it was really two rooms. Uh, it was really two rooms, two atmospheres. Mark Ravel and Manana plays a lot of humor uh, in his way of speaking. He uses sometimes uh, abuse, uh, sometimes uh, languages or let's say words that are hanging like uh, Aho, Lana Dada, for example, uh, which makes his audience laugh a lot. At 69 years old, the former president uh, ousted from power in 2009 by his rival Andrew Jalina plays a traditional card of a good family man. His nickname Dada, which means dad in Malagasy. One of his key measures, which he often repeats in his meetings, is to offer school kits to all Malagasy children, whom he says he considers to be his own children. The former president who made his fortune in the agri-food industry advocates the value of work. His uh, dis detractors, however, uh, consider him to be an authoritarian, too intrusive and even dictatorial. Uh, but his supporters believe that it takes a strong man uh, like him to get Madagascar, one of the five poorest countries in the world, back on its feet. And Jalina plays the youth card that amazes him. His meetings are real shows where he arrives by helicopter with his aviator glasses. He promotes uh, a very ambitious vision of Madagascar, often mocked by his opponents. In particular, he promised that some cities would become more developed than even France and the United States. While his program is mocked by many middle-class Malagasy, he enjoys a very strong popular base in the lower districts where his 
orange t-shirts are once throughout. We also saw that during the two television debates, there were many promises on both sides. If both want to build morals, hospitals, schools, and bring work to the Malagasy people, Ravalo Manana wants effective decentralization with a strong presidential regime and a government of up to 21 ministers. He wants to strengthen expert, uh, exports, I should say, and get children back to school. Well, thank you very much for your time uh, this morning. Uh, Right, so uh, African News will keep uh, watching the situation and bring you updates regarding this uh, elections.